Imagine walking down the street on a beautiful day when suddenly you see this attached to a light pole, a creepy flyer for a milk bath. The flyer shows a photo of a dirty dilapidated bathroom that has a gray haired stone faced woman in a white gown standing next to an uncomfortable looking man in a tub that's filled with milk. Customers, or possibly victims, are able to choose between soy, almonds, or traditional milk, whatever that means. Only men are able to take this mysterious milk bath in which the old lady will watch you as you use her sponge. The flyer was spotted all around Los Angeles around December 14th, 2017, and on the bottom of the flyer, there's a website listed to schedule an appointment. Upon visiting the website, you are greeted with nothing but unsettling photos of men partaking in this leche bath. It's confusing since the men don't look like they're enjoying it, but at the same time, maybe they are? After all, they must have paid to bathe in the old lady's milk. And as advertised, she really does watch you, even through the window from outside. Upon closer examination of the photos, many questions arise. Why is the bathroom so dirty? Why is the tub placed in the middle of the room? Why does the milk look diluted? Why is there a rope? And why is it underneath the tub? What is that white stain on the towel? And who took the photos? Perhaps it was the husband, who's really the mastermind behind all of this. There are many other questions as well, but what exactly is the purpose of this milk bath, and how much does it cost? According to the old lady's Twitter account, the goal is to clean the black right off of you. The average tub holds 40 to 80 gallons of water, so that would mean that the average cost of filling a tub with dairy milk would be around $260. That means that the old lady possibly charges hundreds of dollars just for a single bath. It didn't take long for word to spread about the milk bath lady, and soon, social media users would make horror memes about it. One YouTube commenter named Black Mr. Black wrote, She must be a dead woman who needs to sucker men into getting into a cursed bathtub with milk in it that somehow sucks some of the men's life force when she watches. Eventually, the mainstream media ended up reporting on the milk bath lady as the aforementioned flyers were spotted in St. Louis, Missouri and Phoenix, Arizona. And I saw this. To be honest, it sounds like a really good time. And honestly, I'm really thinking about it. So I just went to the webpage right now. I know. Pretty interesting, huh? Here's the second half of those pictures. And if you haven't guessed it, this is my favorite picture right here. So how does one actually take a dip in this coveted milk bath? Inquirers were told that they had to mail a physical letter to the old lady explaining why they were a top candidate. There was also a hyperlink at the bottom of the milk bath website that told users to email the old lady. Clicking on the link then brought users to a Facebook page that belonged to a guy named Alan Wagner. His page was apparently filled with memes and comedic content and it soon became clear that the milk bath was a hoax. You are fake news. Wagner and his creative partner Sidney Marquez were the masterminds behind the prank. Wagner, who was a 26-year-old digital artist that worked for a now-defunct comedy website called Super Deluxe, decided to create the Milk Bath Flyer. The ad was originally pitched to a beverage company that requested Wagner to create a meme that would make their drink go viral. The tub was supposed to be filled with a drink, but the company thought that the meme was too weird and so they decided not to go with it. That may have been a mistake, however, since the ad ended up going viral with Wagner replacing the drink with the milk. It's unknown how long Wagner kept these flyers up, since it's generally illegal to post flyers around California without permission. Around 200 flyers were posted around LA, and the website got over half a million visitors within a week. Nevertheless, Wagner told the BBC that he received hundreds of messages from people who wanted to take the milk bath, but he had to let them down. Sometimes he told people that the old lady doesn't have technology, and so they had to write a physical letter and mail it to her address, which was actually the address of Wagner's unsuspecting friend. Wagner told the New York Post, I can only hope he is inundated with letters soon. He has no clue. It was also revealed that the people in the photos were friends and actors, the latter which were found online and paid $20 each. One of the actors actually showed up in a suit, unaware that he was just going to sit in a tub full of milk. Wagner pointed out that you could tell how uncomfortable he was in the photo. It's unclear which actor he was talking about. Wagner even sat in the tub himself and can be seen in one of the pictures. The tub, which may be a bath fitter, was bought from Home Depot and then returned. 
The bathroom itself was created using objects that were lying around, and everything including the set and actors cost only $300. With the mystery of the Milk Bath Lady solved, there was just one big question that remained. What exactly does the ad mean? Is there a message behind it? Is it social commentary? Satire? Wagner told BBC, I like to leave the interpretation up to the viewers. Generally, it's supposed to be a viscerally upsetting, confusing thing. We like to make projects that reside between reality and absurdity and make you question what you believe is normal. We like to blur the line between what's real and what's constructed. Wagner also told the Post, I really like the image I came up with. This old woman bathing men, and it's ambiguous what anyone is getting out of it. Nobody seems to be enjoying it, and yet they are partaking in it. The conflicting nature of the ad is perhaps the reason why it was so successful. It's so random and absurd, and yet there's a small part of you that wonders if it's actually real. While it sadly was just a hoax, imagine if people were actually able to step into a grimy bathroom and bathe in a tub full of milk as the old lady from the flyer watches you. It's not completely lost on Wagner, as he told Los Angeles Magazine that he would like to take his comedy to the next level by having a physical space for an experience. If you like this video so far, be sure to subscribe, like, and click the bell icon for notifications. Wagner has created other viral content as well, like Round Meal, which is a ball of macaroni and beef that can be conveniently boiled in its plastic wrap. There's also this wanted poster of someone who keeps breaking into a person's dorm just to place a jar of Prego marinara sauce underneath the victim's pillow. Not only is there a website people can visit, like something out of GTA 5, but there's security footage of the culprit committing the act in question. What's more, you can email the victim with any leads, and when I did that, the victim replied that they've been getting thousands of emails containing false information, and that I should contact the authorities if I know who the real culprit was. Now this is where the story should end. A guy ends up making viral content, and finds success doing what he loves. However, things take a dark turn as Wagner, who's a progressive feminist, was accused of and over a dozen women. Two of these women, Aiden and Renee, are Instagram meme creators, and they came forward with their stories in October 2018 and March 2019 respectively. Aiden, who was in a relationship with Wagner, basically accused Wagner of stealthing. There was also another time when Wagner kept asking Aiden for s**t, despite her saying that she wasn't interested in the beginning of the night. Eventually though, she unenthusiastically changed her mind, since Wagner wouldn't stop bugging her for s**t, but this resulted in an unpleasant experience. Meanwhile, Renee, who was friends with Wagner, said that one night after going to a bar together, Wagner ripped her in her apartment while she was blacked out drunk. Yeah, so in October, um, a really good friend of mine, Aiden, came forward about her abuser, her uh, Alan Wagner. And um, I was kind of shocked to see that she had posted about it because Alan Wagner also me. And after we publicly came forward about this, like does like over a dozen other victims came forward as well. Alan Wagner more than a dozen women. Wagner denied all of the allegations and provided details to the stories that painted a slightly different picture. There is a meme creator who's repeatedly posting that I have quote admitted to over a dozen women. I feel I need to say I've certainly never admitted this. I have slept with 16 women in my life. I've been in contact with the majority of them. And I know for a fact they do not feel this way. This is not a true statement. I have never used force or violence or the threat of force or violence in a 
multiple contexts in my life. Wagner also provided evidence to back up his innocence, such as showing a screenshot of a text message that Aiden sent to Wagner just two months prior to her callout. In the text, Aiden said that she always felt safe around Wagner and that he respected her boundaries. Wagner also revealed that Renee still kept in touch with him even after the alleged <laughs> Renee even asked to collaborate with Wagner at some point. Despite this though, Wagner did acknowledge that he unknowingly hurt people and apologized for his unintentional actions. He said that he's working on bettering himself and trying to be a better feminist. However, it doesn't seem like anyone's accepted his apology and Wagner bemoaned that for two years, he's been harassed, threatened, and doxxed. Social media users ended up accusing Wagner of 12 women and people actually called Wagner's workplace, which resulted in him getting fired. This escalated to people spray painting, Alan Wagner is a all over LA. People even found where Wagner lived and posted flyers showing Wagner and Marquez's names, photos, and home addresses. Marquez was accused of being a apologist and for trying to get the victims to take down their accusations against Wagner. Marquez, who was also by someone else years ago, denied these allegations and Wagner claimed that Marquez now has been diagnosed with PTSD. Hi. My name is Sydney. I'm Alan's creative partner. I'm here to talk about the accusations against me as manipulative, as a victim silencer, and as someone who enables I wrote all this down and I'm reading it off of a paper because it is very difficult for me to talk about and I want to be able to say what I mean without letting my emotions cloud my thoughts. I want to start by saying I would never enable or I was many years ago and I would never work with someone who was harming others in the way I was harmed. I felt that as someone who'd experienced as a woman, as a friend of a man who caused harm to someone else, I could do something about it. I wasn't totally sure what that something was but it was better than nothing. So I reached out to her with only good intentions <laughs> in my heart. I never once asked her to remove her posts, never told her not to speak publicly about what happened. I never so much as hinted at silencing her, <laughs> to call me manipulative, to say that I <laughs> and silence victims is completely untrue. <laughs> Wagner says that these events have caused him to be and addicted and that he's engaged in self and was hospitalized for a full body panic attack. Additionally, he states that he was involuntarily committed to a psych ward and that he's been seeing a therapist and getting advice from an abuse resolution specialist. Wagner concluded that all of this has escalated into something wrong. The abject defamation of me as a is wrong. The emotional and threats of physical we both endure daily now are wrong. Five years after the allegations, it seems that Marquez is no longer working with Wagner. Based on her Instagram account, it seems that she's now happily living in Kentucky with a guy. Meanwhile, Renee is still posting memes on Instagram and is now doing OnlyFans. As for Wagner, he still posts memes on his Instagram account and is supporting himself on Patreon, where he has almost 1,000 patrons as of this time. So it seems everyone has moved on with their lives.